So let's go back. It's 2008. And my next guest skyrocketed to fame at just 17 years old after winning the hearts of over 30 million people on American Idol. Shortly after, the teen sensation scored a massive Billboard hit with his debut album. His song, Crush, peaked at number two on the Billboard 100. And life in the public eye became a struggle as he battled with his inner self and his sexual identity. And then in 2012, he took a break from the spotlight and set out on a journey towards spiritual and emotional healing, back with more music and a better sense of self. He says he's grown proud of who he is as a member of both the Mormon and the LGBTQ communities. And in his new children's book, My Little Prayer, he's sharing that message that sometimes all you need is faith, patience, and prayer. Please welcome David Archuleta to the team camp. <laughs> How are you? It's so good to see you. <laughs> Listen, this book is based on the lyrics of your song, My Little Prayer. You wrote that after praying. You said for clarity. Where were you in your life at that time, David? Well, it's, it's something that I try to do every, every day. I just try to begin and end my day with a prayer. But sometimes I forget to do that, especially at nighttime. <laughs> and one of those nights that happened, I fell asleep before I said my nightly prayer. And in that, that night, I had a dream where I was praying, but I was singing my prayer. Oh. And um, God was talking back to me. He wasn't using any words, though. He was just using music. And as we were talking back and forth, he told me to get up and write down my prayer. So I managed to get up. I went straight to the piano and recorded the chords that were playing in my dream that I was wow. singing my prayer over and wrote down everything I had said. And I didn't change anything about it because I felt like it was given to me. Oh. And that's how the song and, and the book came to be. I, I didn't change anything about them because I felt like that's what God wanted me to keep it as. You so. know, in the book, you also talk about there's a message about patience. And, and you've said that it's a message for you on how you embraced yourself on your journey when you were ready to. It was uh, last June. Um, you opened up about your journey with identity and sexuality. You actually wrote on Instagram, for me to find peace, the reality has been to accept both are real, things I experience and make who I am. When did you decide or how, was there a moment that you had this revelation or inspiration for of acceptance of yourself versus seeking it from others? I, I think it's still uh, a process because I, I do care a lot what other people think of me. Yeah. It's just a, something I don't know how. Well, listen, <laughs> we all do. People say they overcome, don't care, but, but people care. I mean, people will say they don't care what others think, but you do. There's some part of you that does care. You may not let it destroy you, but you do care. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I felt like on my journey, like more than anything, even more than my my career and any other accomplishments, I feel like the number one thing that I try to work on is my relationship with God. Mm. And um, I felt like trying to come to terms with my feelings, who I was, how I was attracted to, I felt like that was getting in the way of my relationship with God. And I felt like the, the right thing to do was just to like push it away. But when I was trying to push it away, I was just, I guess I was just pushing it down because it never went, it never goes away. Yeah. And I felt like I was starting to feel shameful to come to God because I was like, I can't change this thing that I think he, he doesn't like about me, mm -hmm. that I hate about myself. Because from what I understand with my upbringing and being a Christian and stuff, I felt like it was bad to be how I was, simply to feel how I felt. Mm -hmm. And it finally came to just praying. And I was just like, wow. for the, I don't know how many hundredth time of praying, God, if you're there and if you really have a plan for me, please take this away from me because I don't want to be in a way that you don't want me to be. And he finally just said, David, you need to stop asking me this because as you can see, I'm not going to change this about you no matter how many times you ask me, no matter how many, how hard you try. This is how I designed you and you need to understand what my purpose is wow. for you the way you are, and you need to see yourself the way I see you. I don't see you the way that you do because I was very angry with myself. Uh -huh. I was very resentful to me just for simply being me and who I was attracted to. And um, so I just decided, I was like, you know what, then I need to have patience and maybe I'm asking the wrong thing because uh -huh. I've been asking this for probably 15 years now 
And um, it, it changed my perspective. And that's why I decided to post publicly about it because I was doing my yard work outside. I was just pulling weeds. And all of a sudden I felt God just say, David, you know, I trust you, right? And he said, I want you to share what you've been going through right now. Wow. I was like, oh, I was like, this is something I don't really want to be talking to everyone about. But I was like, you know what? I'm sure there's a reason I need to do this. I'm sure for myself and for other people in my situation. Mm. And so that's why I decided to post about it um, when I did. Well, you've written more about it from the perspective of this children's book. And I have the, what I was told was a favorite page of yours. Let's take a listen. Heavenly Father, I am grateful for your eternal presence. I'm learning to be patient and that you are really there. Sometimes I am afraid and I know that's lacking faith, but I'm beginning to understand that for me, you have a plan. David, it's a beautiful book. Why is that um, one of your favorite pages of the book? I love it because I felt like it was just what I said in my prayer. Just, and I think it's important for people to know that you you can be vulnerable with God, and say like, hey, sometimes I'm lacking faith, and I and I'm I'm afraid, and I don't have the answers, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. And sometimes we face disappointment when we're talking to God and asking for things. We don't always get what we ask for, and we can be really disappointed, and we can feel like, okay, I. Is God not there for me? Maybe he doesn't care about me. Maybe he doesn't listen to me. But um, what I wanted kids and just anyone else who reads the book to, to know is that even with disappointment, you can uh, things can turn out okay and you can be happy and you can really learn that God really is there and he loves you and he's with you. Well, it's a beautiful children's book and thank you for sharing your book and your journey so openly with us.